So Adrian, an auspicious day for you and the company with the launch of your latest product. Yeah, hi, hi. Um, yeah, it's been good. I just, just come off the stage introducing the product to the, to the audience here. So, you know, we were traditionally known for values, vessels value, um, but we've, you know, broadened our horizons. We've been using the AIS information for about the past four years now. But, you know, there's only so much you can do with vessels on a map, right? So we've been doing that for a while. Um, but, you know, about two years ago, we decided we really want to derive a lot of interesting analytics to help support either investment decisions or lending decisions or even down into individual operational decisions on, on, on the owner's side. Um, so effectively what it is, is it's an automatic ton-mile demand ana analysis tool. Um, you know, it all works online and you can go from, it's built from the ship level and then you can group it up into any which way you want. So you can look at it for whole fleets, uh, companies. So if you wanted to look at just, you know, the MR2 fleet, if you wanted to look at the eco-engine modern MR2 fleet, or if you wanted to look at the Greek-owned MR2 fleet, or whichever way you want it, whichever way you want to cut it, uh, you can do it at portfolio level, individual company level, you can compare companies to companies and so on. Uh, but for me, where it's really interesting is when you start looking at the, either the macro or the trade route related ton mile demand analytics, right? So that is, you know, everybody wants to know what sector's going up, what's going down, should I buy VLCCs and sell sewers maxes or, you know, what's the underlying demand for these vessels? And, you know, what you have to look at is what's happening to the demand for these ships and what's happening for the supply, right? So supply is relatively straightforward. You can make net fleet growth assumptions and so on and so forth, looking at the new building order book and projected scrapping, but demand is very tricky. Previously, people had done it in a very laborious and manual way, which was looking at customs reports, chartering reports, and so on. That's, A, it's delayed, it's incomplete. You know, if you're looking at customs reports, it's at least six months old. Um, we wanted to go to the core data of the vessel movements. So the idea is that we've you know, spent two years in incredibly complex algorithm I automatically identifying every vessel that a journey does. That's historically back to 2012 and now going forward. And the journey is picking up cargo somewhere, dropping it off somewhere else. Sounds very easy, but actually it's very tricky because there can be lots of other related or lots of stoppages of the vessel uh, that are not related to picking up cargo, such as bunkering, layups, idling, uh, floating storage, and so forth. Um, so, you know, we take about two years of resolving all these problems and building algorithms that will identify these non-cargo related stoppages uh, to be able to remove them from uh, the journey calculation. So we just have the vessels picking up cargo somewhere and dropping it off somewhere else. Obviously, you can have multiple discharges and transshipments and so on. That's all to do with the complexity. And then what you get out of it is that I can say, you know, for any sector, any subsector, any group of vessels or any individual vessels, what is the underlying demand? And what we're seeing is that, you know, the relationship there, and, you know, you have to come to me for the actual statistics, but the relationship between the growth in the demand and the growth in the supply. We see in most sectors that demand has been outstripping supply on a cumulative basis and on a year-in-year -year basis since 2012, when that's really the earliest we can go back to with the satellite a AIS signals. Um, the problem is, for in 2012 and prior to that, the market was not in equilibrium. There were too many vessels and not enough demand. But we're seeing for most of these sectors this in demand exceeding supply and moving in the right direction towards equilibrium. I think that's a very, a very complete presentation of the new product. If I perhaps talk about vessel values more widely and, and the sure. traditional service, one of the things um, one will sometimes hear in the marketplace is that your service, it's difficult to calculate the condition of the vessel yes. when you calculate the value. Yes. So, I mean, condition is always a challenge for us. So today we value about 50,000 vessels every day. It's about 51,000 tankers, bulkers, containers, gas, now OSVs and also mobile offshore drilling units. Um, you know, it's a very sophisticated version of a desktop market valuation. What could you buy or sell the vessel for today based on the specifications of the vessel, uh, the transactions in the market, and any changes in market sentiment between the last transactions and today? Because you do have times of illiquidity. So when you talk about the specifications, you're talking about things like the shipyard, the des engine, the design, various things like that. And you could potentially there start talking about condition of the vessel. We cannot physically inspect 50,000 vessels every day. It's, it's, it's insane. So we can't know the actual condition of the vessel. But we do have some indications, such as 
the classification of the vessel, the class society that's being used, and the class status. You know, we have, it's been suggested to us that we should also take into account the quality of the owner. But, you know, on a lot of analysis on that, it's just too wide, there, it, to the, there is too much spread. It's, it actually adds more inaccuracy. Because, you know, you can have owners that, are fan, that have a very good reputation that 90% of the vessels they take very good care of and you might find that some vessels have very poor maintenance just because for whichever reason or they've just bought them in or, or, or so on and so forth. So you start to make these assumptions about condition and it could increase the inaccuracy of, uh, of, of, the, of the valuations. Obviously, condition is very much correlated to age. So, you know, the depreciation element of the valuations that we do is very significant to, to, to the value. Um, and you do find there is a relatively correlation between the, the shipyard that it's built in uh, and the condition of the vessel. Just because better shipyards do better quality vessels, they tend to be looked after better. Or if not looked after better, they tend to just last longer. So, that if you really need to know the condition of the vessel, you've got to go fly out and do an inspection of her. What we do is we give you the market value of the vessel, assuming good condition. So if you know, you go see the vessel, you said, actually, the surveyor says she needs a million dollars of work to get her up to decent condition, and we value that vessel at $20 million. Guess what? That vessel is worth $19 million. So we give the baseline that then the inspectors, the, the, the surveyors, and so forth can make their, just the absolute adjustment to the, to the market value. There are services out there online that claim to be able to provide that missing link. Would you consider incorporating them into your offering? Oh yeah, I mean, we're, we're, you know, we are very open-minded and constantly forward-thinking, and uh, absolutely. So, if anybody running those services would like to make contact with us, you know, we are an information-hungry organisation, and our sole purpose is to try to reflect what is going on in the market. You know, we're not trying to overvalue, we're not trying to undervalue. We get paid on the accuracy of our valuation. So anything that can help us increase that, we'd be happy to in involve. And how accurately are you running? <laughs> so um, we have, we put our dirty laundry for everybody to see. We're the only company that does that as far as I know. So we give a historical um, histogram of the difference between our valuations the day before each and every clean sale that comes out, right? What I mean by clean sale is not hindered by finance or charter or, or various other things that's going to uh, manipulate the fair market about the price of the sale. Um, so our values the day before effectively mean how well are we predicting the next done price? It'd be better if we, our statistics would look better if we did it, our values on the day of the sale, but it's, it, it, it's not a true representation of how well we're predicting it. Um, so you just have to look at the histogram, but I think our... I think our mean error is in the region of plus 1.5%. So on average, across all the vessel types that we look at, we are, going back to 2011, we are about 1.5% overvaluing on average. Okay, which is very interesting because a lot of um, ship owners will s believe that we undervalue vessels. Uh, when we look at the actual statistics, we are actually slightly overvaluing. That's really a nature of the declining market that we've had since 2011, right? As the market declines, you're always going to be slightly behind. Um, you know, so the reason that a lot of people think that we undervalue is that they are comparing our values to the broker values, which often can be quite inflated in the same way that an estate agent, when he comes around and values your house, often gives you a nice value that makes you happy rather than necessarily what reflects the market. In your view, can prices go much lower? <laughs> of course they can. <laughs> of course they can. Uh, it was before my time, but you know, there's always the famous stories of the VLCCs sailing out the Japanese shipyard straight into the uh, Indian breakers. Um, so look, they can go to zero. Okay. Um, you know, there has been quite good news recently about shipyards reducing their capacity, shuttering some of their operations. Uh, we seem to see a somewhat of a step back of the government support, particularly in Korea uh, and potentially in China. I mean, you know, there's a big political question there because shipyards are large employers and there's a whole employment issue. But, you know, what the Koreans are finding is they're supporting the shipyards to the detriment of the ship owners. So, you know, and the point that was made that in, in the... Um, conference today is you know, how long can they keep supporting these loss-making uh, organizations. So as those 
come out of the market as the shipyard capacity is reduced, that's a good thing for values and a good thing for rates. Uh, it just takes some time to adjust. Um, but at the moment, with the you know, six, seven hundred shipyards in, 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 in China, uh, with you know, multiple ones in Korea being supported and so on, that there is potential for it to go. And last one from me. If 2016, as a trading year, on a scale of 0 to 10, was a 6, with 10 being outstanding, how would you assess prospects for 2017? <laughs> uh, we at Versus Value don't really like to give an opinion on the future. Uh, we prefer to look at you know, the real facts, the real data, what is happening, uh, what is happening today. Um, you know, as I showed in my presentation, you know, dry bulk, generally the larger dry bulks, the Panamaxes uh, um, and um, Cape Sides, seem to be moving away well, they seem to be moving towards the equilibrium again. Demand is outstripping supply. It has been quite continuously. Uh, the market was not in equilibrium back in 2011, 2012. There were too many ships, not enough demand. We seem to be pushing in that way. So as long as there's no large exogenous shock to demand, uh, that trend looks to continue. Supply seems to be calming down. So I'd say in, in, in both sectors, uh, you know, there is everything in place for a recovery. But what we know better than anything is that the ship-owning world are their own worst enemies of destroying their own recovery because as soon as there is the glimmers, people get on and start ordering the cheap ships. You know, I mean, I've, I've, I've heard Greek ship owners you know, say to me, I can't miss another cycle, I must invest now. And, and uh, you know, I've also the, the, the quote is, while everybody expects the cycle, there is no cycle. Um, so... As long as everybody remains calm, I think we could have a potential recovery in, in, in values, um, but who knows.